Hey guys, it's Shelly with Kimo's Camera. Today I want to tell you a little bit about how to put a gallery together. So I'm going to dodge out of the way and let you see what's behind me on my own wall here in my home. Kind of cute. Uh, that is my own personal gallery here in my home. And I want to tell you how I chose how to put that together. Because there's a couple things, especially as you're getting ready to do family pictures and stuff, there's a couple things to keep in mind with your pictures and how to put a gallery together. So the first thing you want to look at is how much wall space you have. Sometimes you have a huge wall, sometimes you have a little space where you want to put this gallery. Sometimes it's fitting like on the stairs, or maybe it's going above a crib, or something like that. You want to look and measure out exactly how much space you have. So that you know what kind of space you want to take up. You want to also make sure you're leaving ample room on the top and the bottom and on both sides to make sure that your gallery looks centered on the wall or centered in your space and that it's not too close to the edges of the walls because then it will look off, a little bit off. So that's the first thing you want to look at is measuring the space. Then you also want to take into consideration how much space the, the gallery is going to take up in comparison to how much wall there is in that you don't want your gallery to overpower the space. So you don't want it to be like, oh my gosh, when you see it. You want it to be like, wow, that's really pleasing to look at. That's really comforting to look at. So if you have a smaller space, you're not going to want to fill it completely full. That's why you want to make sure you have room around the edges. The second thing you want to take into consideration is where that gallery is going and how you decorate that room. So I don't know if you can see behind me, barely, but my couch has yellow and teal pillows on it. And when I was planning our family pictures, I knew I wanted it here in this living room and that those are my colors and I wanted it to match. So we wore those colors and made sure that as we took our pictures, they matched, the background matched the style in my living room and the colors. You don't always have to do that, but I think it helps a lot to add to the style of your room. So we, we do, we decorate a lot here in our home with kind of antique feeling and so we actually went to an antique store that had a bunch of stuff out in their yard and that's where we got a lot of our pictures taken so we have the chipped paint and the old tools and that kind of stuff in our pictures well that adds a lot to the elements of my home so that's really cool and then of course we dressed to match so we made sure we had the yellows and the blues and then the cool thing was, is, and this happened by chance, but I don't know if you can see the daughter right over that shoulder. Um, she's standing in front of this big yellow piece of metal. That really pops in my living room. That draws out the yellow that I decorate with a lot. And that just happened by chance. But sometimes you can actually plan that to know, oh, we decorate with a lot of darker woods or we love a lot of bright colors. You're gonna look for backgrounds when you take your pictures that are gonna accentuate those colors and really make your gallery feel like it's part of your living room and it was planned. And the funny thing is it really will be planned usually, okay? So that's the second thing to consider, what kind of colors you're gonna wear and what kind of background you want in your gallery. Now, if you want more information on that, there's a ton of stuff on Pinterest. We've pinned a lot from other people who put together like what kind of colors to wear and how to how to put together what your kids are wearing, what your husband's wearing, so everything looks really cool. It does make a big difference to have the right clothes in a picture. We notice this a lot as photographers that but that families that really plan what they're gonna wear um, and look really classy or look really true to who they are, their pictures tend to look better when they're done. So it does help to plan and to borrow clothes if you need to, to find things that match. That's what we had to do for this picture. We didn't have a lot of yellow. I was able to round some things up some, from some friends and family. So take that into consideration and check out our Pinterest page um, and see if there's anything on there that helps you decide what those colors are. The next thing you want to look at is decide kind of the shape of your gallery. Now, I love this gallery. We get a lot of compliments on this particular gallery behind me. I'll dodge again. It's got the big picture in the middle, two smaller ones on the sides, and then another small one on the end. It's very aesthetically pleasing to look at, but it has a challenge. In the middle of it is a very tall, more skinny picture. And if I was going to do this again, because I didn't plan this out the way I wanted to, I actually would have chosen a different setting for our family picture in the center. Because to get it long and skinny, we actually had to zoom out away from our family and my family is not as big as I would want them to be. So take into consideration the shape of the pictures. Some of my other favorite galleries have long skinny pictures in them 
you have to shoot that very special so that you have the right proportion and so that you have um, the picture lays out right. And if you know that ahead of time and you can take that with you to your family picture of this gallery, hey, I'm going to do this design. It takes these kind of pictures in these shapes. Then your photographer knows, oh, I've got to draw back on this one. I've got to have one going landscape. I've got to have one going, you know, portrait. You need to know those things before you have your family pictures taken. Case in point, we did some family pictures for a family member a few months ago. We designed up a gallery for her. She laid it all out and realized that one of her kids' pictures is going the wrong direction. And so she was trying to figure out how to solve it. Luckily, we were able to crop that picture to flip it so that it works. But she was actually going to have to reshoot that. And then it wouldn't match because it wouldn't be in the same background and clothes and everything and lighting that we had because it was taken in a completely different state. So it's really important if you're going to spend some money on a gallery like this, really plan it out beforehand if you can. If not, you're going to may maybe be a little bit limited on what gallery you can choose. And that's okay, too. There's a lot of great options out there, hundreds and hundreds of options. But if you have one really particular and a certain kind of space you want to fill, then you're going to want to plan that beforehand. Those are a couple of my favorite tips when it comes to laying out and planning out your gallery and your family pictures. Um, if you want more information, we've got a lot of information on our blog and on our Pinterest page. Visit us at chemoscamera.com. And check on the blog to find more about how to get your kids and your family great for family pictures, have better success there. Uh, um, there's also a blog post about how to decide whether you want to use canvas or regular prints or foam prints. These behind me are actually foam. Um, there's a lot of information on there and a lot of great deals going on. We'd love to have you come visit us. So hopefully this is helpful. Call us with any questions. We'd love to help you set something up and get, get something on your wall that really means something to you and that brings joy when you see it. Happy printing, everybody.